Hey, Dragon Con. Thanks for going virtual with us. Uh, Crispy here with our friend Mark. Uh, Mark, thanks for joining us, kind of. Oh, well, thank you for having yeah. me virtually. Virtually. Yeah. Virtually. You know, it's it, it's all the fun of, well, most of the fun of Dragon Con without the crowds, I guess. No lines. Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm saving a lot of money. I have to say that. That is, oh my goodness, that consideration has been a topic of conversation. It's mm -hmm. like, I love my friends, but I'm not traveling. I'm not hotel rooming, so... <laughs> are you are you reinvesting that in other fun nerdy ways then, or just kind of hanging out? Well, yes. Rather than uh, splashing it down in the dealer room, I guess I'm just ordering things online. That's fair. I, I do have a collection to maintain after all. That's fair. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Well, we I mean, we are going to have a dealer room online for Dragon Con as well. So Ooh. fair warning. Uh, say goodbye to your wallet, Mark. Oh, uh, all right. <laughs> All so, Mark, right. uh, to those of you that might know know Mark Mir, Mark has been a longtime uh, friend of Dragon Con, uh, who's gone on to some voice acting fame as well, like that. But mm -hmm. Mark has always been a fan first. So, uh, personally, as our friendship has grown over the last couple of years, uh, thanks for taking the time out of your day to kind of carry on the spirit of the convention with us. Oh, not at all. Of course, I'm going to miss Dragon Con as much as anybody, and yeah. uh, I'll. I, I'll really definitely be partaking in the online stuff just so I can feel like I'm part of Dragon Con. Right. Mm -hmm. This, we, we're still working hard on trying to get the connection, the community, because Dragon Con is, there's our panels, you know, where you guys mm -hmm. get to talk, Q&A, but like Dragon Con's got that family vibe to it. And I know you are one of the prominent people, like I see out there at photo shoots, uh, you're doing 13 panels a day, I think, and things <laughs> like that. I think the only the person that rivals you for the number of panels is our own Tony Gal. So you guys have a nice little race there. What What are some of the things like traditionally, like if the convention was going on though, that we would see you at? Oh yeah, I mean, there's there's things that I do most every year. Uh, certainly the Puppet Slam. Um, I usually have something in the Puppet Slam uh, since before I was a guest actually. And uh, Bo Brown uh, very kindly invited me to join in. Uh, I love doing the puppet slam, so oh. I will. I will definitely miss that. Uh, the parade, of course, I've been yeah. hosting over the last couple of years. Uh, before that, I was a participant, so yeah, that that will be sorely missed, of course. Uh, the last few years, I've also been doing Celebrity Pathfinder with Jason Bowman. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, I got to play uh, last year. That was fantastic, uh, and the year before. So I'll miss that. Uh, of course, you mentioned all the photo shoots. Yeah. I'm usually involved with uh, the uh, superhero costuming forum guys and doing stuff with that. Of course, the Mass Effect fans. Uh, I always go to their photo shoots when I can. So uh, many things, uh, but some stuff, some stuff is going to be here at or or will be here online at uh, Virtual Dragon Con. Uh, for example, the video game voice tracks uh, or sorry, video game tracks uh, voice actors panel called Masterpiece Theater. Uh, which I'll be doing with Quentin Flynn and Dino Andrade. Uh, we got to do that again. We did. Uh, it is pre-recorded. We we've yeah. already recorded that. Uh, but I'll look forward to watching that because that was a lot of fun. And thanks to Kevin Stallard uh, for putting that together and getting us all back. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll be doing improvised Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I did that last year with the folks from Dad's Garage Theater and uh, Lucky Yates and Amber Dash from Archer, mm -hmm. and we managed to put together a online virtual edition of that with me as the dungeon master as before and we managed to get a special guest star mr oh, colin yeah. mockery colin wow. mockery really colin man colin mm -hmm. is such a sport yes he is and you know we we call him the patron saint of improv so that's right yeah. it, it, is he is he doing it was the, the, the saint was it chad what what's the the character named the priest. What, I think oh, yes, he is. He's playing his regular character that he often plays at Dad's Garage in Atlanta, uh, yeah. Brother Bartholomew, who is, I believe, a sixth level cleric of Chad, the god of sensible footwear. Ah, naturally, yes. Mm -hmm. Praise be to Chad. So mm -hmm. it's 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 wild because like Colin is one of those faces that I feel like everyone at the convention knows, but he's never in town for the convention. So I was doing Dragon Con goes virtual. And with your partnership with Dad's Garage, we now we can say, hey, Colin Mockery is doing a panel with us this year. That's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And he's always been a cool guy. Uh, I mean, because I know I've been to a lot of the shows at Dad's Garage. Dad's is a local theater here in Atlanta. Uh, and you come down to Canada and hang mm -hmm. out with that and do D&D. &D. Uh, I, I cannot stress that enough. This is this is my personal recommendation. I'm not the professional, not on behalf of the convention, but Dad's D&D uh, &D shows are always some of the best. So I cannot stress Go check out the stream. I don't know when it's going to air yet, but that's going to be something to to just kick back and enjoy for sure. 
It was a lot of fun. And we actually uh, also got some artists involved. Uh, oh, yeah. We had some artists from here in Canada uh, draw us some wandering monsters. Ooh. And uh, so, yes, those will be up there. Uh, Mr. Nat Jones, who's uh, done work for Image Comics in the past, and Stephen Notley of Bob the Angry Flower, uh, which is a cartoon that I quite enjoy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun show. That's, that's going to be amazing. Do you feel like with you know the pandemic right we are all we're all having to talk about it because it is our way of life right now uh you, obviously that's affected your life you have done pretty well in adapting and staying social and things like that but like where do you feel like the challenges and the hurdles have been you know, professionally or personally these last six months uh well certainly i felt it professionally because a lot of the stuff i do is live uh by theater and uh that just doesn't really happen anymore we're starting we're starting to open up a little bit here in canada uh i've been doing a live show uh an improv show on a weekly basis uh and but of course everybody is just sort of waiting and seeing and all health guidelines are being covered which means of course your audience is a tiny fraction of uh, of what it would have been before the pandemic uh and you're just allowed so many people in the venue uh, and of course there's all the guidelines to follow and whatnot but uh, i'm really grateful to to actually being a, be able to perform live uh yeah. and i know down in the states that's not the the same situation <laughs> there's lot. yes yeah so it certainly affected things uh as far as the social aspect uh you know i have been playing a lot of Dungeons and Dragons in the last uh, five or six months. A lot, quite a bit, quite a bit. Some of it streamed, but a lot of it just private games as well. Yeah. And that gives you a chance to, you know, connect with folks. And uh, funnily enough, a lot of the games that I'm playing are people in, you know, different cities and different countries. And, you know, uh, a, a game, a campaign that I've been playing since the pandemic began. Our dungeon master lives in New Zealand, which means that. <laughs> He gets up at seven in the morning to, you know, run a game for four oh. or five hours, you know, till noon, basically. He gets yeah. up at seven in the morning and then runs a game till lunchtime for us. Uh, the rest of the players are in the UK. I'm here in Canada. So, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's an interesting game. It is a global game. It is a global yeah. game. And then there's another campaign I've been starting uh, to play with, uh, actually, Tara, Tara Oaks from oh, Death Tara's Rush yeah. in Atlanta, uh, and uh, some friends of ours from L.A. So, again, the the scheduling for that is always weird. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Tara ends up playing, she's she's actually in Improvised Dungeons & Dragons this yes. year at, at Virtual Dragon God. Uh, she ends up playing until, I think, you know, one in the morning sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a little bit easier, though, when you don't have to drive home from the theater and take the makeup off, I suppose. This is true. This is true. Do, do you feel like, I mean, obviously, you know, work and, and time is valuable, but do you feel like you would have been doing these kind of remote sessions even if we didn't have the pandemic? Or do, do you think like the situation of us having to do things digitally definitely kind of like, oh, yeah, we, we can do that. Why aren't we doing this? You know, like uh, uh, was a resource before, but did this really play a hand in, in increasing the volume, I should say? I'd say certainly because you know I'd, I'd used World Twenty and but yeah. almost exclusively for streaming games uh, yeah. for for stuff that was that was being broadcast, uh, and in both of the campaigns that I mentioned, the pandemic was the impetus to actually okay, well we we all have time on our hands, yeah, yeah. and uh, in many ways that first camp because again that first campaign I mentioned the one uh, with the folks from New Zealand and the UK we started playing that basically as lockdown happened and then have been playing sometimes twice weekly since. Oh, so yeah. in many ways, that game has been a lifeline for me. Yeah, you know? I yeah. yeah. I've got a Pathfinder game going on right now. We, we haven't been able to meet for a few weeks because I've been working by the team. The Dragon Con goes virtual mm -hmm. and it's, yeah, like having that social aspect, having these connections uh, has been necessary. Like I, I speak as a social introvert and I'm sure there are others out there who are the same way. Like, I don't like crowds of people, but Dragon Con is one of the few places where I'm good with it because it's home to me. Mm -hmm. And I've always had the anxiety of like, people are like, oh, just hop hop on a, a, a chat with six other people in Zoom. And I'm like, that sounds like a lot. No, thank you. But now that I've been doing the Pathfinder game these last few months, it's just like, okay, no, I, I get it. You know, there's definitely, you're still getting that connection there. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, that is what I'm going to miss the most about Dragon Con. You know, the, yeah. the parties are fantastic. Uh, all these things, the, you know, the photo shoots, just watching everybody's cosplay, the spectacle of Dragon Con, right. of course, I will miss. But what I'll miss most is getting to see the people that I only get to see once a year. 
you know, the, that uh, not just the Atlanta folks, because fortunately I can sometimes come down when it's not Dragon Con and they actually just get to hang out with folks in Atlanta. But there's lots of people that live in other parts of the States that I've never been to that I only know uh, because of Dragon Con and I only get to see a Dragon Con. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I will miss, I will miss all of them. Yeah, it, it's fun to see the global outreach this community has and how it's coming together right now, even though we can't be together. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I mean, it's when we get back, hugs all around, high fives, you name it. Like it's like we thought we partied hard before the pandemic, but I think when the next time we have Dragon Con in person, <laughs> uh, it's it's we're gonna need two weeks, you know, to kind of catch yeah. up and things. So yeah, that's true. I mean, Dragon Con was already a full week long. I think yeah. I think we hit that point a couple of years ago where it's like, oh no, it it actually is a week long. Yeah, thing. We start on Thursday, but there are many of us who start a lot earlier than that. Yeah, I think last year I think people were spotted in costume in the in the host hotels on the the, the previous Tuesday or even oh. Monday. Yeah, I think yeah, somebody week. posted there was like, you know, a lo maybe a lone cosplayer on the Monday before <laughs> Labor Day and yeah. So <laughs> At least two weeks. I say a month. I say a at, month. At this point, I mean, it feels it feels like it. You know, we just opened our Discord at the time of recording a couple of days ago, and so that, that, that like I guess we're like, well, the week before is the new week of you know. That's let's just do this year round, and I think mm -hmm. that's great. Um, you uh, also have a lot of stuff that's going on outside of Dragon Con, uh, and then just these fun little projects. I want to kind of touch on some of these things that you've got going on. Uh, the stuff sure that you wrote. I believe you've got a podcast uh, working, speaking of gaming, with uh, Dragon Con's very own Dot. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about that. Uh, that has just started uh, at this point. Uh, we're dropping new episodes every Friday. I think two have been released so far. And uh, there'll probably be a few more by the time this, th this airs. Uh, it's called Stitch of Fate, uh, a podcast by night. Ooh. And it deals with a small group of vampires, a coterie, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm playing a character named Max. I'm playing uh, Clan Nosferatu, which is oh, fun because it's one of the clans that I played, you know, back in the 90s. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's a great group. Uh, so not only Dot, but also uh, Gaming FTL and the Bubbernaut. And Mathis Games is our mm -hmm. storyteller. And I've really been enjoying the sessions. Very cool. Yeah. There's a big push to the By Night camp, like, like, like the Masquerade. I'm like my friends also do it like in Atlanta by night, and mm -hmm. I'm seeing I'm just seeing this beautiful resurgence of Vampire the Masquerade kind of come back thanks to the streaming community, which is just kind of wild to me. I, yeah. love, I love the return to this. Yeah, I was uh, fortunate enough to get to be a recurring guest on LA by night. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, uh, which is out of LA, obviously. Yeah. And uh, they uh, they were a fantastic group. I got to play uh, a Toreador, who, which I'd never played before. Like in tabletop, I'd always been either Nosferatu or Malkavian. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was given a gift by, uh, by the storyteller, uh, Jason, who basically... Uh, wrote this fantastic character uh, who was, uh, was going to be sort of an antagonist and then asked me to play him when I guessed it. And he proved popular enough that they kept sort of calling me back. And at one <laughs> point they actually flew me down because they, you know, it's like, we, we'd we like uh, Chaz to sort of be the season ender villain, if that's possible. And yeah, so I was I was delighted to get to play. And, uh, and now it's very, it's very exciting to uh, get to start a new campaign and with a character that's about as far from Chaz Price as possible. Uh, right. Yeah, Max is uh, not exactly a fashion plate. <laughs> there's, just, there's just something fun about shifting gears. I mean, you've been doing mm -hmm. improv for a long time. And the, the idea of thinking on your toes is something you excel at greatly, but like to have that set character and there's just something nice about the freshness of okay let me go on to the next thing mm -hmm. uh with what you're doing with dot and stuff like that so I, I i'm excited i haven't had the chance to watch it again i've been busy i'm sorry but i i know the people involved and i can speak to your quality as a performer that i definitely think people should check it out uh and that the, the uh, like it was on facebook and you have a twitter pod by night like we talked about mm -hmm. so yeah go out and check that out is there any and, other projects that that we want to talk about? Maybe uh, your stuff on Amazon. Uh, oh yes, yeah, uh, of course. Uh, f all four seasons of my television show, Tiny Plastic Men, are available on Amazon in the states and Canada and the UK. Mm. Uh, so uh, it is. How would you describe it? Oh, it's weird. It's sort of a. It's a fusion. It's a fusion of sitcom and sketch. Mm -hmm. And uh, the sitcom portion of our show deals with three guys who work as prototype testers at a struggling toy company. They're the guys that 
work in the basement and test all the toys. And all the toys that this company produces are either highly dangerous, completely inappropriate for children, <laughs> uh, possessed by some supernatural being, sentient, or a combination of all of those things. Right. And uh, so, yeah, we have the sitcom portion, and then the sketches are sometimes inspired by the toys or just inspired by the previous scene. So there is sort of an improv feel to it. Okay. Yeah. And it does, every time I watch it, it, it does, I, like, I know it's scripted, but knowing the performers on the show, it still has that kind of off-the-cuff feel to it. it definitely we definitely we yeah. we definitely developed a lot of stuff through improv, and there was lots of improv on set as well. Yeah. I mean, you had some some great performers you're working with, and I, I love that the work that you continue to do with dads, uh, your Edmonton Theater as well, because you guys also have, was it the, the Dynasty show that you guys have been streaming every now and then? Are you guys Are you guys still streaming that? Uh, no, our season wrapped up. So we wrapped up our season yeah. when our season would have normally wrapped up. But yeah, we we moved online uh, fairly quickly. And you're mentioning uh, some of the guests that we've had on Tiny Plastic Men. Yes. Uh, I should mention that a Dragon Con regular is actually one of the guests on Ooh. Tiny Plastic Men, Mr. Lloyd Kaufman of Troma. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lloyd was uh, fantastic. We'd written an episode in our second season, which was, you know, a very clear homage to the Toxic Avenger. Yeah. And uh, our legal team was not keen on letting us do it. it was too uh, close. And we, well, <laughs> but I mean, we clearly loved the Toxic Avenger, and we were we were saying how much we loved it. Uh, right. So we just decided on our own uh, that we probably should go straight to Troma and just see if we can get permission from them. Mm -hmm. And Lloyd responded us to, uh, to us directly. And not only did he give us permission, uh, he insisted it on flying himself up uh, to Canada and said, uh, like, I'll be in it. I'll be in it as me. And we <laughs> couldn't, we could not turn down the opportunity no. to have Lo Lloyd Kaufman play himself in our, you know, little Canadian TV show. Uh, and yeah, he was one of our favorite guests. He actually, he came back after that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he was, he's a real character and he was always a pleasure to work with. I, I've never seen Lloyd not be Lloyd, if that makes sense. Like, he's always on. Like, he he is such a character unto his own self, you know, because I've only ever seen him at Dragon Con and a couple of, like, trauma festivals and things like that, so. Um, I think Lloyd is always like that. Uh, he, he, uh, he was, he was as I say, he was a delightful, like, yeah. delightful person to work with. And he also, uh, he shot his own little mini behind-the-scenes documentary uh, while he was on set with us. And, yeah, he's uh, he's a great guy. Awesome. Well, Mark, uh, we got to get things going. But before we go, I've got one question left to ask you. Mm -hmm. And it's from our random question from the bowl. So we've got some different colored cards here. we got yellow, green, orange, and pink. Do you have a preference of color card? I leave it to you. All I right, leave it to you. Dig deep, the glimmering gloom. All right, we got a pink card here. Thank you. Better than a, a red card, so you can still stay in the game. All right. Fun question here. Uh, is, mm -hmm. What is an instrument you always wish you knew how to play? The horn of blasting. Why the horn of blasting? Well, uh, I like the risk. There's a 20% chance that it will explode doing 10d6 fire damage. That, that seems fair. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't just want to break out that horn at any given moment, though. I mean, you want to make sure. I mean, there's nothing worse oh. than an ill-timed an Ill fireball, usually. That's true. That's true. But if it works, then you're doing thunder damage to your opponents, and they usually don't have resistance to that. So. That's true. No one ever does. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mark, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for helping me out with everything this year. You also have a little cameo in our uh, Masquerade uh, halftime show. Oh, so yeah. I oh. encourage the fans to tune in and, and see your part in that. Mm -hmm. And uh, where can we find you outside of the convention? Like, do you have social tags you want to drop? Uh, yes, I am, of course, on uh, Twitter and Instagram. I don't have unified handles across all hashtags, I'm afraid, or all uh, social media, I'm afraid. But I do have a Twitter, which is Mark underscore Mir. And my Instagram is Mr. That's M-R period, Mark Mir. <laughs> Excellent. Mark. And uh, uh, you can also find me on Cameo. I, 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 I do that, you know, for all your Mass Effect catchphrase related needs. Do you feel like that? I, I've never actually done anything with Cameo. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's been a, a, a boon to you right now, the Cameo side of things? Like, Yeah. That... It, well, it's true because uh, conventions are no longer a thing. That's my so, fear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, but Cameo uh, has continued to be sort of a a source of connection with between me and my fans, and uh, I re I appreciate that it's there. Yeah, I, I I can attest to your kindness and warmth in person, and I hope everyone at home understands that. So please take the time, reach out to Mark, uh, hit him up on Cameo social media, and then check him out on the 
the D and D feed on Dragon Con, the voice actors panel, and just a smattering of other things throughout the weekend. So a smattering, a light smattering. Yes, Mark, I love you as a friend. Thank you so much for being here, and My I friend. can't wait to see you here in Atlanta again next year for Dragon Con. I look forward to returning to Atlanta and to Dragon Con uh, because it really is it's home on Labor Day weekend. That, mm-hmm. I, it always it always feels like coming home. Well, we'll welcome you home as soon as we can, my friend. And until then, we'll see you guys soon. So long, pal.